tell by the title of this video, yes, I'm going to be explaining why I bought an MGTF instead of every other brilliant sports car ever made. But first, I want to go into the history of MG and how I got into it. Back in the 60s and the 70s, MG were making loads of classical, nice sports cars. But in the mid-90s, MG hit the news lines with their brand new miniature sports car, the MGF. And in 2002, they cut off the MGF and started making pretty much a facelifted MGF called the MGTF. The car was brilliant, it hit the news lines, everyone in the UK was really excited for it. But until they found out what the engine was, it kind of went downhill. And a lot of MG enthusiasts should know this, it was the famous, unreliable Rover K series engine. Fuck me, it's hot. Nope. Currently right now as I'm filming this video, it is nearly, I think, 30 degrees in the UK, so I'm boiling. That's three, four, no, that's three. We're here to discuss the main point of why we, well, me and my dad bought an MGTF. Back when, obviously, the MGF was being, you know, produced and styled, was the mid 90s and obviously um mg was like a great sporting company back in the 70s and 60s obviously making the mg bgt the mgb and the very old tfs when it came around to the 90s that was when rover come in rover bought mg and really ruined it in a way as you probably would know the mgf and the tf had the same well not the same and the k series engine and obviously as you know that engine was a little bit unreliable but some people failed to notice that if you actually looked after it, you serviced it, you cleaned it, or, well, you ragged it a little bit, it'd actually be all right. Like our engine, obviously, we've got a new head gasket put on it. You might have seen that, I don't know. Uh, and it's running just fine. It's running just fine. It's obviously, what, what's the mileage? I'm going to turn the heaters off. It's, fuck's sake, 30,229 miles. When we bought this car last year, it was on 27,000, so we've already done about 3,000 miles. And the history of this car, well, I'll go into that in a different video. But the real reason is this, why did we buy it? Well, because MG wasn't very, it was, it wasn't a very, it was a sporting name, but no one really liked an MG. It was all really men with flat caps and people who didn't really know what they're doing. Obviously, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, hence why we went for one. We bought an MG because they weren't very famous, they were very, well, they were famous from reliability, they weren't very favourative sporting cars. Obviously, the cars you wanted to buy back then was the MX-5, the MR2, uh, and possibly even the Z3, and, and a couple more that I, I can't remember. And in August, uh, obviously, we found one, I think it was about like £1,000, obviously low mileage, and needed bits doing to it, and over the past nearly a year, we've done a lot to it. So, I'll tell you what, for example, I'll show you the bits that we have done that I haven't filmed. One thing that we have done, which we haven't shown, which I can show a picture now, but you can obviously see on the video, are these anti-roll bars. My, my dad picked them up for, I think, 100 quid maybe or so on Facebook Marketplace, and they are pretty brilliant. And we've also got one of those Mike Satter wind deflectors. Yeah. Keep the wind out of our ears as we drive down the road. So, we fitted that. Uh, I didn't know if you knew, if you can see here, we've got some leather, a leather arm, a leather armrest. These came with fabric and I think vinyl, uh, which is very, very nice. I don't know if you can see, uh, the steering wheel isn't leather anymore. We got, uh, we went to the MG and Triumph Spares Day back in I think, February, and we managed to pick up this very nice mint condition uh, MG steering wheel with a bit of blue, with a bit of blue, and obviously grey there, which was a very nice touch. Another thing we've done that we didn't film was some blue seat belts instead of the black dull ones because obviously it goes goes nice with the car and the modifications that we've literally just bought not long ago were these mats we bought these i think about a week ago and i got them for my dad for father's day so i thought they'd look good with a genuine mg band they look good in the mg now not that long ago our roof was just a little bit muckier and a little bit messed up so we got some foot restoration materials and we will clean it up and i think it looks a lot better because if you can see in the previous clips then you'll be able to tell now, if you couldn't already tell you the problem with the now, we've got a um, new exhaust for it, and yeah, it sounds pretty well. Let's have a listen. <laughs> to mention that i did do on my tiktok and i showed it was um may need to zoom in a little bit we've got a little cheeky induction kit in there which makes the car sound well just a little bit more throaty 
Now, something you might haven't noticed is that under the license plate, there's a grill here. When we first bought it, you might have realized that there wasn't one there. So we got some metal grills, well, metal mesh, and cut them up and then polished them. And now I think it looks rather good. We've also done the same around the sides. I'll show you now. So we've got this, oh, so we've done this one where the induction kit comes out. You can see the little metal hole there where the air goes through and goes up there into the engine. Now we come to the front. Have we got anything down here? Well, In the video, uh, I don't think it's on camera, there's now uh, twin horns, which they only came with one chair, but we installed another one. Uh, we cleaned it out, so it's easier to come to see, so. Um, spare wheel, that's the same. All these nuts and bolts in there, that's been changed. <laughs> Nothing here has really been changed, it's all kind of just come back a little bit, but, oh well. Quite a while ago, actually. Um, we bought some new wheels and some Toyota Proxy PR1s or something. Uh, ages ago, it was quite a funny story how we got them, might tell that in the video. Uh, and when we got them, we actually fit some brand new drilled brake discs and pads along with the new wheels. So I think it gives it a, a nice touch. Now, one factor which I love about this car, which is kind of the reason why we bought this car, as well because it's convertible, meaning that you can, well, you may now be able to see, you can have uh, lift. Oh, there we go. Now, uh, now convertible, which means that when you drive down the road, you get a bit windy in your hair. Enjoy yourself. Well, every single car in the world or every sports car in the world, will end up with buying an MGTR. Well, it was cheap, looks cool, and very, very sporty. Well, why would you look at it? It's beautiful, it's convertible, you can make it sound nice, make it look nice. Why would you not want anything else? So this now clears the video of why I bought an MGTR, and why, well, yeah, why did I buy one, how I bought, or think how I bought one, what got me into MGs, and a lot. If you want to see more videos on this MG, or things about the MG, leave a comment below, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you then.